So before we um, get really deep into the main topic, I always like to get some context on, you know, who, who we're talking to, what their story is. So would you mind maybe, uh, Sarah, starting us off with some, some backstory? Yeah, sure. Um, I, I think it's really interesting getting to know other people in these groups and seeing where everyone's come from. I'm actually fairly new into web. Um, so I spent the first 10 years of my working career working for a nonprofit organization doing youth work and community work. And as a part of that, um, they didn't have a lot of money. And so I, <laughs> I volunteered. I've worked for nonprofits. I know exactly yeah. how that goes. <laughs> yeah. And I mean, there's really amazing things to do with that. And there's some downfalls as mm -hmm. well. But one of the things I discovered, I was always interested in graphic design, like, mm. you know, kind of when you're in school and you're using Microsoft Publisher and, <laughs> you know, that yeah. kind of thing. And then when I was working for this nonprofit, they needed flyers and posters and, you know, different bits and pieces. And I just got interested and started, you know, being self-taught, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, my family is reasonably creative. My dad's an architect. And oh, so wow. I think that stuff is kind of running through my genes a little bit. And so then when I had this opportunity, I was like, yeah, that's great. So I got taught by some other people who were in that nonprofit as well. Um, and I just kind of slowly developed my skills over the 10 years. Um, at one point, I built a website for one of our smaller centers, but it was done with like one of these old, I think it was like with Corel or something. <laughs> like it was, I was going to ask it you if it was Dreamweaver or something like that. It was before Dreamweaver. <laughs> like it was like, it wasn't oh, HTML, no. but it was like one of those visual ones. Anyway, it was bad. Like yeah. it was so bad. But at the same time, like I think I've always had this dream of supporting good things mm -hmm. um, and feeling like the branding and people weren't putting enough effort into the website. So the organization I was working mm -hmm. with just had this really old school website and I felt like I wasn't selling what we were doing. What we were doing yeah. was amazing work. Right. We and you got to have a that. visual representation of like the values behind yeah. what, what it is you're doing. Like I, I know exactly what you're talking about that feeling that, you know, something important is happening here and no one recognizes it because they can't see past yep. the ugly website, you know? Yeah. So if I could only, you know, give them yeah. the, the vehicle to change the world, they probably would change the world. Yeah. And I felt like I didn't have that skill. Like I was, mm. I was learning that I was quite um, capable with visual design and that, you know, that came fairly easy to me, which yeah. was great. But then when it came to building a website, like I didn't know what I was doing and I was kind of, I ended up trying to help them with a Joomla, um, website and I couldn't find <laughs> my way. Joomla's kind of confusing. I mean, I, I've, I've <laughs> blogged on Joomla sites before and yeah. I got to say, as far as I guess, intuitiveness for content creation, I, yeah. I don't even know about the web design aspect of it for just, just updating yeah. content on a Joomla site I found yeah. was so much you know, m more difficult than it seemed like it needed to be. So I can't imagine what it would have yeah. been like to, to just put one up and try to figure out the design and architecture for yeah. a whole site. <laughs> well, that was kind of like my first proper trying to get into this whole web thing um, mm -hmm. when I was still working with them. And um, so I had uh, back in the story, I had been over in China for a year and a half doing community development over there and then ended up getting pregnant with my first child and we decided to come back to Australia. And so while I was kind of in limbo land, we mm -hmm. thought we would end up back in China. Um, so we came back and I was like, well, what am I going to do while I'm here in Australia for six months? Um, and someone offered me to help with the national website in building it in Joomla. And I was like, really excited. I was passionate about getting this <laughs> web page amazing. And we just, we just hit roadblock after roadblock and I didn't know what I was doing. And oh. we actually never got it done. Like we oh, never no. got that website done. And I remember kind of leaving that moment, like I had a kid and so I had to step back from it, but I just felt like we never got there and mm. I'd been there 10 years and we had the same web page and it wasn't mobile friendly and, you know, it just, I, I felt, I just had this passion, I think. Mm -hmm. um, so anyway, me and my husband ended up deciding it was time to move on from the nonprofit, um, come back closer to family where um, with kids um, and I had to just get a regular job just to cover our expenses. Yeah. And so I worked for a couple of years and through that got lots of more opportunities to do graphic design. So I ended up working as a digital designer with them, which wasn't websites, but more like interactive PDFs mm. um, and that side of things, which I loved and I really enjoyed doing it, but I still just felt like I wasn't quite doing 
what I was meant to be doing and I, it hadn't really hit. Yeah. Um, so I then got pregnant with my second kid and while I was on maternity leave, my kid just was this amazing sleeper. Like he would sleep for <laughs> six hours a day. And I know that's like the worst thing to say to anyone who's a mum out there. I'm sorry. Yeah. My first kid wasn't like that, but my second <laughs> kid was, and I was at home. My son was in school and childcare and my older son. And so I had all this time and I decided to get on lynda.com. Yeah. And I got a subscription for three months. I asked my parents for my birthday for a subscription and I just went for it. Like nice. I did every course I could think of. I, I decided I was going to do web design. And so I just started learning. I learned HTML and CSS. I did their basic course, then their intermediate course. And then I did built my first website and suddenly realized, I think I need to be doing WordPress. Everyone mm. wants a blog. Yeah. I, I can't just do these um, standalone websites. I think I'm going to have to go into WordPress. So then I again went back into Linda and I did <laughs> They're like WordPress, child themes, um, WordPress security. And I just went through all of their courses as quickly as I could. And so I spent about six months mm. um, basically doing that. And I loved it. I, I cannot speak more highly. I know it, it's expensive, but yeah. for me, it just They're was so good, a, though. a great learning yeah. tool. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so then after that point, I was back then to work part-time, um, doing my digital design. Um, but on the side, I decided I was going to spend, my ideal was two years to mm -hmm. build up a portfolio. So, so how did you do just, that? What, what was your process of actually becoming a freelancer? Yeah. Well, what I decided to do was find friends who needed a website. So I, I think I didn't feel confident in myself. Like even though I had done the training yeah. and I kind of, I understood it conceptually, I felt like I needed to really get my hands dirty. And I thought if I can build 10 websites mm. just for friends and family, they can pay for the hosting, but I'll do the building side of it for free. If I can build 10 websites, I think I'll feel a lot more confident in charging for sure. what I'm doing. Yeah. Um, so I found like I had a friend who was a landscaper. I had a friend who was um, like a, a gas fitter electrician. Okay. Um, I, so I just kind of went around to different friends who either had a really bad website or um, no website didn't have at all. And just said, look, I'm learning. I'd love to do it for free for you. Um, if you can pay for the hosting and be a little bit gracious with your time, like mm -hmm. with me learning as I go, I'd love to do it for you for free. And for them, it was great because. Yeah. You know, it's they got free. something out of it. <laughs> yeah. And for me, it was great because I didn't have that pressure of, but I've paid you this much money and you yeah. haven't achieved. And so I felt like it just gave me a little bit of breathing room. And at the same time, I could slowly build up my portfolio on my website. So yeah. I kind of thought then I'd get to this point. So my plan was two years, but then all of a sudden I got to the one year mark and realized it just wasn't going to work with my son in school. And I was finding it really hard to manage part-time work and doing this stuff at night time, like I was just oh, okay. exhausted trying to yeah. fit it all in. I don't Imagine. know how. I don't know like how you could do that. I mean, I, I've worked two jobs before and I don't know how you could do, you know, kid part or two kids, part-time job yeah. and web design business. That that's sounds insane to it me. It was crazy. Like I was just getting completely exhausted. And I think more and more my heart was realizing I just wanted to do the web design stuff. Yeah. That's really where I wanted to be. Um, and so that was, mm. you know, it was kind of the moment to just bite the bullet. Mm. Like, although I was petrified and we had certain expenses that we had to cover and there was part of me that re really thought I'd done the wrong thing for a little while. Mm -hmm. And we just decided, let's just go month by month. Like if we make it to the end of this month and we've covered the expenses we need to cover, then we'll just keep going. And like all the business websites say, you've got to give it five years for yeah. a business to realistically make it. Sure. Um, and so we just took it month by month. And what I'm finding is websites lead to websites. You know, people talk yeah. to people. I don't think people trust advertising. I think people trust people. And Absolutely. what I've found is I build a website and they know someone who needs a website and so it just keeps going. And so I'm hoping that will just keep going that yeah. way, but we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> no, that, that actually really lines up with what a lot of other guests have said is that referrals have been their number one source of business is once they get yep. going, the referrals keep them, keep them more yep. than busy. So but some yep. people are so busy with referrals that they're actually starting referral networks where they're handing, you know, they're yeah. giving work off to other people in the community. And I think it's great. I think it's yep. probably your, 
your best bet for staying busy with quality clients and quality work yeah. and, um, yeah. and building a good reputation. Because like I said, if you're, if you're in the position of now handing work off to other people who have a good reputation and building this rapport yeah. with not only in the community, but with a network of clients, it can only be for everyone's benefit in that situation. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I think so. I think so. Yeah. So, so maybe we can start to switch into talking about, you know, I'm sure you really had to get um, serious about developing these systems um, when you had all of that going on, when you had the kids, yeah. the, the part-time job, web design, and you had to fit everything in a very small amount of time. I mean, the only way you could get it done, I would imagine, is if you had just really strict controls over every every element of your work. Um, could you maybe start to speak to where you started? And like, yeah. How about this? Tell us about when you just when you figured out that you had to get serious about systems. Yeah. What some of those first systems were, and and then if you can, maybe a little bit about how it's evolved now. Yeah, it is most certainly evolved, and. I think I have wasted the most amount of money in this last year that I could possibly have <laughs> wasted, but I don't see it as being a bad thing. Um, I kind of just see it as being part of the journey. And I think what I'm realizing, you know, you get all these recommendations through the Facebook groups mm-hmm. or whatever about different hosts or different security plugins or, and I kind of tried them all in some ways because I think each of us is different. And even the systems that are working for me, they're not necessarily going to work for someone else. And what I was finding was, you know, I started out with a certain lot of things, but sometimes they just didn't fit quite right. So when I first started out, most of it all evolved through mistakes and through errors. Um, when you suddenly realize, oh my gosh, I'm not organized enough and I'm not getting back to my emails enough. So some of the first things I put in place was I created three different email accounts, which kind of sounds over the top, but I had one that came straight through my website. So if someone contacted through the website, it would highlight in a particular color on my email. So I knew mm-hmm. that it was an inquiry straight away. And that just helped me get through the fluff because you get so much emails coming through. So then I have one email account that just has all my signups to everything so that then, you know, I can carefully filter through that. Um, And then I have one email account that's just to do with administration. So I have all my security warnings coming into there or my Mm. backup errors and um, those kind of things so that then I can manage from a technical side. And it just kind of segregated what was going on. So I wasn't spending so much time kind of filtering through most of the time I knew that middle email account that could come later, but I knew I needed to deal with anything that came through the website straight away. For example, um, I I think I do something similar. I I use, uh, a lot of Gmail filters, big Gmail filters for the same same reasons. (laughs) They're great because they filter out all of the junk and, Mm -hmm. you know, you can just make sure you get to the things that are really important first. Um, I, I, it was interesting going from a nonprofit where there's no money and you you learn to do things all yourself. Like mm-hmm. you spend hours and hours and hours doing something that you could pay someone to spend one hour doing, but you would do it for hours and hours. And I think I came with such a strong mentality of I have to do everything myself and I have to um, just spend the time learning how to do it. And in some ways I agree with that, but in some ways I just felt like I needed to accept the real world that if I can pay someone like, so roughly my um, hourly rate is a hundred dollars per hour. And so if I could pay someone a hundred dollars per hour or pay for some like system um, or some plugin that was going to do something that I would spend 10 hours learning how to do, well, that's actually beneficial, but it was really hard for me to wrap my brain around spending money this is kind of jumping into the next section, but to save money. Sure. So instead of trying to like learn everything myself, actually open myself up to what, what was around. So I initially went with iThemes, pretty much everything. I quite liked iThemes um, systems. So I had iThemes security, iThemes sync. Um, I did iThemes security pro, iThemes sync and um, backup buddy. And then I was on a server just here in Australia, a good one. I decided not to go like GoDaddy or anything, but go with a really good um, local server, um, which is called Digital Pacific. They're in Queensland. They're amazing. Um, And that was great. It was a really great way to start. But what I did find over time was that I was spending a lot of time checking backup buddy errors. Mm. And I was spending a lot of time with my security errors coming in. And I actually found that backup buddy and iTheme security didn't 
play nicely, which seems <laughs> ridiculous. But when I then went to my great sites or all of a sudden there was this time where one of my sites went down and I had to get it back up and I thought I had backup buddy sorted, but oh, no. it didn't migrate so well. And I had that heartbreaking moment of like, what am I going to do? And in the end it was fine. And I, I felt like I'd kind of, you know, oh, that was a close call kind of thing. But for me, it's those moments where mm-hmm. I suddenly went, no, nah, I have, to, if I want to run a really legitimate business where people are going to trust me and I'm promoting that I do daily backups mm-hmm. and that I am onto it. And within 24 hours, yeah. I will have your website back up and running. I need to have the confidence myself that that's sorted, like that that is absolutely ready to go. Um, And so I started to kind of look around a little bit more at that point, I think, to make sure. So I ended up switching over to WordFence Pro because it actually migrated better with Backup Buddy. Mm -hmm. Um, So again, like I'd spent all this money on IT and security, but then I decided to spend money on WordFence Pro. um, And I was really glad that I did. It was functioning a lot better. and working together a lot better. And then I got to this point where I was like, you know what, I think I'm spending so much time just checking all these things and not hundred percent sure that these backups, I feel really confident in them that I decided to go to WP engine. So it's a significant step up in financial cost in terms of, um, hosting costs. And I was really happy with digital Pacific, but choosing to go to a WordPress specific host who manages the backups themselves and they manage a lot of the security themselves Mm -hmm. felt like it's even though I was spending more money I was suddenly able to step back from those tasks that were taking me one to two hours a week of just making sure they were functioning well that's say two hundred dollars a week of my time that I'm spending and I think what I've realized is being a mom and trying to manage, like I'm trying to run a full-time business, but I have an hour and a half during the day and then I have four hours at night to work. I need to use that time and, and really protect that time and mm-hmm. not spend it on things that I could just spend a little bit of money on. Yeah. And get it sorted and know a hundred percent that, so you know, if like I need to roll the site back. Yeah. So that's kind of like a combination between the work smarter and save yeah. money, which is you know, spend a little money so that you can, you know, you can save time, save effort. And in the end, save on, you know, actually save money because you can charge like for WP engine friends, you can actually charge a little bit more because you know that your, your hosting and security and backups are top of the line and, and people are going to, you know, they're always going to appreciate that. Yeah, I think so. And it's like, I know when you're starting a business, there's that thing of, well, I don't really have very much money and I don't know how to like invest as I'm getting going. And again, it's that thing I think of just biting the bullet sometimes, like just throwing yourself out there. Like I had to spend an entire, an entire kind of website's income to get myself over to WP Engine, you know, like kind of redirect that money. But for me, it happened to be the best thing that I could have done. And I'm not saying, you know, oh, that's definitely the one everyone should go with. But for me, it meant I was able to step away from those mundane things. Like you were saying, like, Mm -hmm. would you employ someone to do some of those things? I kind of am paying someone to do it. It's just that it happens to be a company who's managing some of my things so that I can step away from that and instead spend the time, you know, if a client gets to me, I can deal with that straight away. I don't have to think, I know it's there. I know it's ready to go. I don't have that stress inside of, (laughs) oh, I don't know if if I really hope this plugin I'm using is working or whatever the case may be. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. I think there's a lot of stress and, you know, our reputations are on the line Mm. running a business and, I want to know that I'm not going to be the person that a client starts blabbing about saying, oh, she was terrible. She didn't know what she was doing. (laughs) You know, I want to, I want to know I've got that backing me up as I'm moving forward. Um, So yeah, I probably moved more into the spend money to save, um, save time. But um, yeah, I think, I think that that um, has made a really big difference for me just being willing to invest in things that then were able to back me up as a web designer. I mean, there's plenty more things. Um, Sure. Well, let's talk about, let's talk about some of those other things. I mean, you kind of sent me a list um, as we were prepping for this of some of the things that you do um, that you would qualify or you you would define as a system. Uh, Tell tell me about some templates. You said that you are a huge fan of templates and that you use templates to help speed up your work and help you do better work more consistently. Um, what are some of the templates you use and how do you put them into play? 
Well, again, this one evolved over time. So um, what I found was, like I was saying, my time is really precious. And I found myself again and again reproducing the same things over and over again. So like I would reproduce the same email explaining Mm. who I was, what I did, what they would get for the money, um, answering the same questions again and again and again. And I, I kind of would write it in a slightly different way each time. And I was thinking, oh, this could get me in trouble one day because what if I put something in someone's email and not in someone else's email. And I just hadn't taken the time to step back. I was so madly trying to build websites that I would just rewrite this email every time. But then I realized if I just made a frequently asked questions page on my website, then I can just send people to that page and say, this is how it works. Like this is my process and this is what you'll get out of it. And this is my maintenance and this is what's provided. And instead of rewriting that email every time that saved me half an hour for every client. And I'm thinking, well, That's amazing. Like not having to rewrite that every, or even just having some email templates that are ready to go that kind of, you know, say, hi, how are you going? Great mm-hmm. to get you, you know, having so basically a few just things thinking of any stored. aspect of your business that you do over and over again and yep. creating a template for it, whether that's design, yep. email, whatever. So w- what are some other templates? I mean, do you use design templates, mock-ups, invoices? Yeah, absolutely. So when I do my design mock-ups, I do them in Illustrator and mm-hmm. part of that's come through doing, having a design background. Mm-hmm. Um, but by having, you know, often a lot of the things in Divi have similar shapes and forms. Yeah. And so what I've found is if I just have one that's already pre-built, then I can just move things around a little bit, um, change colors. And instead of recreating, say like the Divi menu every time, or like getting some of elegant themes templates, and then pulling some of the aspects that I tend to use again and again and again, mm. then I just have like this one illustrator file that I can um, change around. So one of the things I offer to my clients is I do two designs for every client. Um, and I do that. I actually got that advice from my dad. So he's an architect and he said to me when he does designs, he always does two really different designs for clients Mm -hmm. and then lets them choose and then continues to work on one of them a little bit further. And I thought it was a really interesting concept. And I know, again, this is a counterintuitive thing of spending more time in this phase but by creating two designs, what I've found is clients take more ownership over what they get is as the end result. Mm. So they actively choose one of those designs and then and this we is modify in it. The mock up stage, right? Yeah. So yeah. it's all in Illustrator, which I feel very quick and confident in, which is mm-hmm. great. Some people will feel more confident just to whip up a Divi site sure. itself as their mock up. But I really like that I can think beyond my skill in the mock-up phase. I, I know Divi enough to know what's possible, what's not possible, but I also know, I don't know how to do that, but I'm pretty sure I could figure it out. Sure, and yeah. so <laughs> if they go for it, then, then that's you go great. Figure so, it out. And you're getting paid to figure it out. And I kind of like pushing the envelope a little yeah. bit. Like I like um, not just doing the standard same old site over and over again. Like I get bored doing the same thing. So I kind of love it when my sites can always be different to each other. Mm -hmm. Um, And so, yeah, the thing I like about spending a little bit more, sorry, I just dropped my mouse, (laughs) about spending a little bit more time in the design phase is the client really gets sold on it and they kind of fall in love with the design. And then it's just a matter of me creating it, which I can spend more time later doing that. Um, And so I just... I don't know. I, I think actually it saves me time in the long run because I don't spend all this time technically figuring out all the technical sides of making it all work. Instead, I've done that in the design phase. And then it's just a matter of like knocking it out. Like I actually find then the build side is heaps quicker oh, if yeah. I spend a bit of time in that design phase and getting that right. Um, so usually I just do the home page. I don't do like the entire website mock-up. Just to get um, the just style. Getting the feel. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, and then that it's, makes sense. it's often really quick then when I'm building it. So yeah, it's one of those counterintuitive things. I think when you spend a bit of time in that phase, you actually save a ton of time in the building phase. So, so we've talked a few ways about, you know, working smarter, uh, saving money by spending a little money in different areas um, so that you can bring a system. So if you have to manage something completely, you're, you're spending a lot of time and, and the yeah. money part of it is kind of in, in your time, the value of your time. Um, so the other thing that we want to talk about is how to bring systems into our workflow and our daily life that actually just make our life better. You know, yeah. we spend a lot of time working and, but if that's all we do, or if that's, 
um, or if we work in a way that's not, you know, um, healthy for us, then we're, <laughs> we're not going to have a very yeah. fun time about it. What, what are some things that you've done for yourself? Um, and it's, whether it's systems, habits, routines, whatever you want to call it, what are some of these things that you've developed to just make your life and work better? I think this is another one where I'm not there yet. I'm still working it out, but I've learned through mistakes. Mm -hmm. So having a family and having kids to manage, um, I think there have been times where I'll just be working 24 seven. Like I'll be sitting on the couch (laughs) with my kids while they're watching TV and I'll just be madly working. Shut up. I'm just trying to like get this (laughs) thing done. And, you know, and then I've had phases where like I had the flu for a whole month and I virtually didn't work. And, you know, like we've gone kind of, one way and the other. And I don't think either are healthy, obviously. Like I think I probably got the flu because I was working too hard. Um, And I think there is something about finding that balance. So for me with our lifestyle, I have tried to really protect my work time. And Mm. then in the other times I try to not come and go from it too much. You know, I am on my phone a bit and I will check Mm. my emails and I try to respond to my clients within half an hour or an hour, even if it's just to say, got your email or deal with it tonight. So protect your Um, work time, but also protect your yep. non-work time so you can yeah. take a real break. <laughs> yeah, I think so. And I think, um, yeah, so like I have this hour and a half in the middle of the day, then I have this time at night. I've also separated that up a little bit so mm. that during the day I do, I try not to do design and development during the day. So I try to do, you know, my finances and all that quadrant two stuff. I don't know if you know. Business administrative hubbies. type stuff. Yeah, like trying to get, um, you know, emails to clients, quotes, invoices, just all that technical things because Mm -hmm. I feel like in an hour and a half to two hours, I can fit a lot of that in. Oh, yeah. And it means I stay on top of it because when I get behind on those things, then it stresses me out and nothing is working properly and I'm not getting paid. And so I try and get that all done there. And then at night time when I have this big block of time, that's when I try and design and, you know, just put some music on and the kids are all asleep and then I can really focus on what I'm doing. And then if it runs on and I stay up till two or three in the morning, like that's okay. I can't do that a few nights in a row. And I think I, I am learning about myself that I can do maybe two in a row really late nights. But then after that point, I'm going to need like a nine o'clock bedtime where I miss out on some of that work time. And I think some of it's about getting to know yourself, like getting to know that if you're sitting and working at nighttime and you get to like 8 PM and you're just like falling asleep or, and you're like trying to push through, it's pointless because you're spending double the amount of time to do anything. Mm -hmm. Whereas if you, for me, if I just go to sleep early one night, then the next day I can smash out a bunch of work. Yeah. Um, and so sometimes I think for me, it's about understanding I'm not going to be productive tonight. I should watch TV for tonight. <laughs> just step away from it. Yeah. And it's that serendipity thing, I guess, of like yeah, just yeah. step away from work tonight. I'm not being productive. I'm not being creative. I'm not achieving. Or even in some of those moments, instead of like doing all of that stuff, I might clean up my computer or something like mm-hmm. something that doesn't take a lot of brain power but it's still actually really helpful and it's still moving things along. But just recognizing in yourself, look, I'm not in the right space right now. I'm not going to achieve anything. And I'm just going to waste 10 hours of my time compared yeah. to later. <laughs> Have um, you ever heard of a book called The Powerful Engagement? No, I haven't. So, so this is, I was really excited when you picked this topic because, um, you know, I, ritual is my term for it is kind of how yeah. I think about these things. Um, has been a huge theme for me for a few years now. And it was actually um, when I I heard this talk by a guy named Tony Schwartz. He's the author of that book, The Powerful Engagement that I just mentioned. And he gave a talk several years ago at the 99% conference. And it was all about, you know, creating healthy habits and rituals throughout your day to get the most out of your, t- your work time, you know, to, to work, you know, uh, to be more productive in like six hours than you could normally be in 10 hours to have time with your family, to get energized. And he had this whole pyramid of like different ways that you get energy. So like physical energy is one form of energy. Um, Emotional energy is another form of energy. Then there's one that, I mean, he called it spiritual energy, but really what he's talking about is like energy that you get when you have like purpose in your life, Yeah, whatever, whatever that might come from. Yeah. And, And 
he, so, and he has these different hierarchies and he talks about how like the quickest thing you can do to give yourself a boost of energy, if nothing else changes, is just a change in your perspective, you know, like that spiritual yeah. energy or the purpose energy. So decide yeah. what it is you're working for and like yeah. find the why behind what you do. And all of yeah. a sudden, everything that you're doing, you're going to, it's just going to feel, you know, you're going to feel it more. You're going to feel into it more. Yeah. And so reading his book and kind of going through some of his stuff was really when I kind of got my shit together as a freelancer for the first time. <laughs> like I yeah. had all these systems that I did, but they were kind of ad hoc and they were, you know, from the perspective of someone who didn't really know what they were doing, but was stumbling around. And here's this person who had this really great, you know, concept of how this should go. Cause he'd been doing it for years professionally for yeah. athletes. And then he switched into the art and design world and started doing it for designers, like this consulting service. And, um, I sort of started there and I guess just to share a bit of my story a little bit, if you don't mind, yeah. um, no, it's great. I, I came up with this thing that I called win the day. And this was my, yep. this was my overall framework. And I had all these rituals where I broke, I broke down my day into, okay, what do I do? Um, first thing in the morning. And I would kind of just like think back to, okay, the last 10 days I've gotten up and I've done X, Y, Z first thing in the morning. Is that the best way for me to spend that time? What, what would make me happier, more productive, et cetera. And I can maybe write some ideas down and then I'd try that for a while. And I'd, I'd like set these time days, be like, I will do this for seven days. If I like yeah. it after seven days, I'll, I'll keep doing it. If it yeah. drives me nuts after seven days, I'll, I'll make some adjustments and just keep tweaking it until I get to where I like it. And I think yeah. for, for me, the key um, perspective change was um, the fact that whatever I'm doing in my, in my day, every day, uh, if I didn't examine that, if I didn't have the self-awareness to look at it and examine it and decide whether or not I wanted to do it, I was basically just yeah. living my life on the default settings that I didn't choose. You know, it's, it's yeah. most of the time it was purely reactive yeah. and I was just doing work, doing life, however I However, I just happened to do it without really yeah. any thought or craft to it. And then I was like, wow, I can, if I take the time to think about it, to yeah. be intentional about it, I can actually change almost every aspect of my life without yeah. anything, you know, any, any change in my material wealth, any change in my, you know, position of authority or anything like that, just, just by being self-aware. And so yeah. I started doing this thing called win the day where I would say, well, I can't change my whole life all at once, but I can change the way that I do breakfast. And yeah. I would find my favorite way to do breakfast. And if I did that in the morning, boom, I won the day. That was my win yeah. the day. <laughs> and then over time, I would just sort of add to that. I would say, okay, for a month, I'm going to win the day by winning breakfast. And then once that became so ingrained that I didn't have to think about it anymore, I would add a new yeah. thing to it. So um, I did this and I went through not only all my meals because that was a goal of mine was to eat healthier, to have more energy. Yeah. Um, but I, you know, I, I wanted to do more walking. I wanted to spend more family time and friend time. And I wanted to, um, work on personal projects more. And I just did it one goal at a time, one yeah. thing at a time. And it was amazing. I mean, just these little ritual habits, these systems, I mean, this sounds almost infomercial, but I mean, I lost almost like 60 pounds. I, I, I got, you know, new, new work, a new yep. life in my work. I got a lot of new yeah. clients. I got a whole new different direction because I was able to be more focused and do the kind of work that I wanted to do. And so it changed the yeah. direction of my freelancing. Um, I spent way more time with friends and family. It, it just really improved my life and it improved my work. Yeah. And all I did was, you know, pick a ritual and do it for 30 yeah. days and then pick a new ritual, do it for 30 yeah. days. It's not going to happen overnight, but you're going to look back all of a sudden and be like, holy crap, my whole life is different. And all I did yeah. was choose a yeah. system or a framework to, to live inside that was better than the one that was like the default setting. So I, that's, yeah, that's I how this has affected great. me. But I mean, I, didn't mean to like go on a super long ramp, but that's, I love this no, kind of I'm, stuff. Cause I think it's I think genuinely it's, really helpful. Right. Yeah. I think like, I um, mean, I think, I mean, generally they say habits take 30 days to form. Mm -hmm. And so you have to stick at something for 30 days for it to be able to go. But it's really hard for us as people not to want to just change everything. Like just feel like, Oh, my life is in chaos. I have to change absolutely everything, but it's impossible for us to change 
everything all in one go. So, I mean, I love the idea of just like tweaking, you know, just bringing one new thing into yeah. your workflow and just seeing if that can make one bit of difference as you move forward. I, re- I really liked what you're talking about with the, um, the physical, emotional, spiritual yeah, yeah. Um, changes. Like I think. I would I think recommend that book me, to anybody. Powerful engagement. He talks yeah. about all those. It's great. So, sorry, go ahead. <laughs> Oh, well, I was just going to say, like, um, without having read that, that's, it's kind of a little bit a part of my journey. Like for me, I love running and oh, running nice. is like a really big part of my life. I got glandular fever last year and it's impacted that a little bit. Mm. And I really noticed like getting the flu this year, I yeah. really noticed the difference that it actually really impacts my mental health to Absolutely. not have that outlet of physical, you know, just getting out there and having a little bit of space as well. Like I love listening to podcasts or audio mm-hmm. books or whatever when I'm running and, but just having a little bit of space, but then something about breathing deeply and just looking after my body physically somehow makes me more alert and more ready to go. Absolutely. Um, spending time with my family. So the emotional side of things like spending time with my husband and making sure I'm not just workaholic. And then the, the why stuff, the meaning I think is super important like that one of the articles you sent through the last one it had heaps of off links and I just went off on all these off links and one of them the guy was talking about if it's not hell yeah Mm. then it's not and um so he was kind of saying you know if if it's not something where you're passionate about it then you're you're not going to be really into it. And I think, you know, when you're first starting web design, you feel like I just need any job. Like I will take on yeah. any single job that comes my way. And I remember I said to this lady, oh. like right in the beginning, oh yeah, I'll do a web page for you. No problems. And I didn't even ask her what her business was. Oh, She's no. a romance novelist. And for me, <laughs> it just wasn't my thing. Like yeah. I, I didn't really look at those kind of web pages. And when I did, they were really ugly and it just wasn't where I fit. And I ended up spending hours and hours and hours on the job. I don't love the web page. It's not on my portfolio. I did it for virtually no money. And it was because in the beginning I was desperate. And I think Mm. I've learned for me, like where I came from, wanting to help small businesses to be able to promote themselves or wanting to help charities or um, that by having that meaning and that why and that, oh my goodness, by by doing this for this small business, that is going to change that person's life. Mm-hmm. And even if they, even if they're paying me for it, I can be a part of giving back to the community or giving to this small business, even if they're paying for my services, that that why gives me passion that makes me go beyond just just pulling off whatever, like just making some web page, but actually bringing in, you know, like really cool elements or making it that little bit funkier or um, adding some extra little form or benefit. Um, And I think it makes you excited about your work. It makes you want to work on it. And then you're more productive with your time. So I really like those three things. I think they're very much a part of what's important to me as a web designer. Fantastic. Well, I think we're getting up to our time limit on the interview. So I like to end each interview with something just called the parting thought. And it's basically just a time for us to sort of crystallize um, a a single takeaway for people based on our main topic. Um, And I I guess um, my question to you would be, you know, if you were to start over again and you didn't have to go through all the evolving process that you did, Um, you know, I kind of gave my idea of that. I I now, and I still do the win the day concept. So I always have something that I'm like, okay, let's refine this daily ritual. What what is, if you had to start over again, what would you do differently? How would you start, um, implementing systems, um, with the information that you've learned since you started? Oh, that's a big question. I know, I know, I know. (laughs) (laughs) Um, if I was to start over again, I think, well, there's a couple of elements. I think if I was to start over again, I would try more services out straight away. So I would get like, instead of spending a whole year doing all the trials for all the different services that are available, I would do it in a really short space of time and nail down a bit quicker what's going to fit me and recognize that it's not just like not one package is going to fit everybody, but it's a matter of working out your own personality. And I think as a part of that, taking the time to step back and work out, well, who am I and how do I work? Am I good at night times or am I good in the mornings or um, how can I separate my time so that I am the most productive that I can possibly be, whether it's um, 
using particular tools or whether it's working on particular projects at different times of the day, whether it's saying no to those clients that you're just going to hate and you're not going to have fun and you're not going to be passionate about, even though it's money Mm -hmm. to, you know, to be a bit more, I guess, um, heart focused of, Mm. you know, letting that passion drive you, but then using, allowing myself to spend money and use tools that are going to help me be more productive, look more professional and achieve the job in a shorter amount of time. Yeah. I think think that's that's something uh, that's a great point. I think that's a great note to leave off on. And I guess just to put my own summary on that is, you know, when I've seen this over and over again with different guests and and in my own, uh, life and work is that, you know, it's so scary to say no to money, but saying yes to things that you're going to hate is never going to work out in the long term ever. I mean, it's just not, it might get you the bills paid a month or two if that's what you got to do. And we've all been there. We've all had to do that. But if that's your policy to just say yes to everything, you got to yeah. rethink it. You got to rethink yeah. it and, and, and find I, out I'm what learning. it is that's going to make you happy every day. Yeah. And, and I guess you got to realize that happy doesn't necessarily mean like happy go lucky every day. It just means like yeah. a sense of satisfaction in the work that you're doing. Like you're still yeah. going to have to work hard. Yeah. You're still going to have to work hard, yeah, like to work to hard say, but I did. You, yeah, you can look back on it and be like, this is something I'm really pleased with. This is something yeah. I, I can put my name on and be proud of. Yep. Yeah. 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 I think that's really important. All right. Well, that sounds like a parting thought to me. Uh, Sarah, thank you so much for joining us on Divi Nation today. No problems. Thanks for having me. Don't forget, if you're watching this video on YouTube or Facebook, take a moment to subscribe, follow, like, and or share. 